time now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys, and welcome to the news section. Um, I hope that you had a good week. Today we have a lot of uh, things to discuss when it comes to Monero. Then we have one article on Bitcoin, SEC, and CBDC. So let's get into the news section. The first thing that I want to discuss is Telemission's first anniversary, which was yesterday, June 9th. And uh, Monero's emission is 0.6 Monero per block, which is every two minutes, or 0.3 Monero per minute. And this is a very important update that is part of um, Monero's, um, Monero's system. Then Rhino posted an article on Monero View Only Wallets and Rhino's neat feature. So basically, View Only Wallet, for the, for the people that don't know, allows you to see someone's Monero in your wallet um, if you're given the, the uh, permission. So uh, then they're discussing the difference between privacy and secrecy. So Monero is private in the sense that nobody can know how much Monero you have and what you do with it. But now you can add an element of secrecy where you allow someone to see what you do with that Monero which you know uh, can be very useful in um, for charities or for governments to see where your tax money goes and things of that nature or you may want to know a specific person what you've done with some specific money uh, for funds you know stuff like that so it's a very very useful um, feature that rhino has been working on it and their different approach they say from the only wallets is that in our wallets show um, all inbound and outbound transactions, so the balance is up to date and does not require the exporting slash importing of key images. Moreover, with a Rhino wallet, you do not need to scan the whole blockchain each time you access your wallet, which is very important. And the funds are there immediately for you to use as you wish. So um, that is a very cool feature. Rhino is a very interesting uh, tool, so make sure that you check it out. Make sure that you read this article for yourself as well, if you do wish to. Um, and yeah, the next thing that I want to mention is Magic Monero Fund raising funds to prevent the EAE attack. Now, um, we're not going to get into what specifically the EAE attack is. It's called Eve Alice Eve. If you do want to know uh, more information about it, then you can scroll down on this link and cl click on um, this YouTube link. And then um, you're going to have a 31 minute video explaining the poison outputs, the EAE attack. Uh, but basically, um, yeah, we're trying to raise funds. Dr. Nathan uh, Borgren, author of two prior works involving Monero statistical security, is trying to change that by spending the next couple of months researching uh, the attack's efficiency along with others so we can better know how to stop them. And um, if you do want to support, click on the last link over here and uh, donate. So far, we have uh, five uh, Moneros uh, donated and uh, zero Bitcoin and zero fiat. So make sure that you donate if you want to, to support Bitcoin and um, its security. Uh, then we kind of mentioned Bitcoin. So I kind of want to step out of Monero for a little bit before we get into different Monero articles. And I want to mention that Nassim Taleb lashes at, uh, at Bitcoin and says it's transformed into a cult, um, which it has been, in my opinion, and many others. I can't read this article, but he said that Bitcoin is an ineffective cult that that uh, not even bad guys want to join anymore, said the author of The Black Swan, a best-selling book on the extreme impact of outlier events. Uh, cryptocurrency falls short, and this is very interesting, on its claim to streamline uh, payments and does not even facilitate illegal transactions well. Nassim Taleb told Bloomberg on Thursday. Now, it doesn't have to, of course, like it it's, uh, doesn't have to facilitate illegal transactions. I mean, it has to, but that's not what we want. But if it can do that, do that then it's not a form of money that can... Uh, free society essentially because if it doesn't do that and you can do you can't do whatever you want with the money uh, without letting the whole world know or a certain organization um, then you're not free and someone is in control of your money and that means that someone um, controls what you can do with it so um, he probably doesn't know about Monero but I'm very interested to see if uh, he would find out about it what he would um, think of it and uh, Nassim if you ever want to come on the show <laughs> You are more than uh, more than welcome. Then maybe you woke up just like me and you looked at the market and you thought, what the hell? <laughs> because everything is down 22%, 13%, 27% in the past 24 hours. Uh, Bitcoin is down 3% in the past 24 hours. But Monero has been holding very good as well at only minus 4%, which has been very, uh, very stable, of course, because it has um, utility. And then I'm actually going to talk about... Uh, Traceable's post over here. He said most coins, and I'm going to use his term, 
uh, puked minus 10% to minus 25% overnight. But Monero is at uh, minus 4.7%, keeping up close with Bitcoin at minus 3%. Outperforming coins with large marketing teams, CEOs, VC funding listed in every exchange with shields under every tweet. That's what's going to happen. You're just going to plunge at every single little uh, fluctuation. Uh, the menor difference is utility, grassroots, and um, integrity. Now, uh, what I'm not going to pinpoint that this is why it, what happened happened. I, I don't know. Probably may just solely from this, whatever. Uh, but as SEC clamp down spurs $4 billion deposit flight from Binance Coinbase and Binance US, the SEC has been uh, going out at uh, Binance and, and Coinbase, and um, they have suffered a lot of withdrawals, $4 billion worth. So um, I'm actually today going to help a friend to get all of this stuff from Binance into a different wallet. And I've been telling him for a long time to not use Binance and not use all the stuff, but he doesn't listen, but now he's finally got to get him out and I'm going to help him put him in a safe place. Um, but yeah, so again, personally, I wouldn't use Binance. I wouldn't use Coinbase. Um, I will look into different um, places to store my, my crypto. It's not even yours if you put it in there. You know, it's not a very safe place. So uh, please uh, take care and just get everything out. Don't wait for a Monero run or a crypto run. Just get it all out and put it into, into a wallet. Now, a uh, quick mention, Kenya Central Bank is thinking about a CBDC. They all say that, that it's not a priority now. They're doing research and they said that the implementation of a CBDC in Kenya may not be a, a compelling priority in the short to medium term. Uh, but significantly, Kenya's pain points in payment could potentially continue to be addressed by other innovative solutions around the existing ecosystem. So they're all saying that uh, we're looking into it. Maybe it's not going to happen, but we all know that everybody's going to have the CPCs um, eventually. Now, I'm not going to get into this too much because we have the man, the myth, the legend, Andreas on the show today explaining the new uh, pocket change feature that changes the user experience, reducing or eliminating the long waiting times between spends in Monero, which if you use Monero, you know what this is and you know that it's kind of annoying at times, uh, to be honest. Uh, but make sure that you check out uh, the whole uh, show today. Uh, make sure that you listen to Andreas, uh, of course, dev section, price report, everything. And also, uh, please, please check out this, um, uh, this article from Andreas in which he basically explains what it is and how it works, um, this new feature. And uh, beautiful, beautiful um, illustrations, um, like always, from, um, from Andreas. And it's a very exciting feature. Then Elite Wallet is now available on iOS uh, App Store. Basically, what it is, it's a uh, ultimate privacy focused wallet in which you can take control of, of uh, your financial privacy like never before. Uh, I haven't done much my due diligence on doing research on this specific wallet. So um, please do before you use it. And um, yeah, it's good to see more privacy focused wallets and and projects that are coming um, around. That's very good to see. Then <laughs> the last thing that I want to mention is a meme that uh, the people on Twitter um, you can you can see if you go on Traceable's uh, Twitter account, but basically, um, Robinhood uh, delisted Cardano, Polygon, and uh, Solana, and it's a meme in which you have uh, Polygon, Cardano, and Solana with a rope around their necks, um, squeaking, squ squirming their faces, and then Monero is in the middle uh, saying for the first time, and then they'll look back at Monero uh, because ultimately being like. like it's stronger. Crypto was not about it being listed on um, exchanges where you have to identify yourself to in order to use it. This was not what it was all about. And uh, if Monero is not going to exist on any centralized exchanges, well, guess what? We're still going to be able to use it. Um, it's only going to make it more stable. People are still going to use it. So it's not going to affect us too, too much. Guys, this was this week's new section. Thank you so much for sticking through it. If you have um, any links that you want me to, to cover, please message me on Twitter, tag me um, at us, uh, you know, Monerotopia, and let us know if you want us to cover something specifically. Make sure that you watch the whole show. The links are in the description if you want to read all the articles. Again, look at the price report, depth, depth section, and all of it, and we'll see you guys next week.